Hello brothers and sisters, today I want to speak to you about uh, 10 different promises that God has given us, but people just don't know how to claim them. You see there are so many people who are saying, these things are not working out for me, this is not working out for me, I don't know this, I don't know that, I don't know if God is still there with me or not. Now I want to tell you that God has planned everything for your life, it's only you who does not know how to claim this. Now, this is nothing to do with about prosperity gospel. You, you know very well I'm a grace preacher. I preach about grace all the time. So I'm not after any prosperity. But let me tell you, God has promised us something. And he has given us, um, th there are so many other promises in the Bible. But I'm going to speak about the 10, the 10 that I did some uh, research here. And uh, I just um, know that if we keep in mind all this and understand how to pick them up, then definitely these promises are for us right now and we can lose them. So now let me just go straight ahead and tell you uh, these uh, 10 promises that God has given us and he wants us to claim them. He wants us to pick them up because we're his children. Okay, so we're his children. And these uh, promises, they come very much in handy, especially in difficult times. There are times that you feel, I'm really low, I'm really far away from God, I don't know what to do, things are not working on my way. Now, there are promises that God has promised you. He has promised you and he tells you, my son, my daughter, please pick them up. It's only you who doesn't want to pick them up. So I'm going to tell you right now how you can claim those promises and pick them up for yourself and they're going to work, all right? Now, the first promise is a promise of blessing. Now, God has promised us blessing. But this blessing does not come because you've done something. It doesn't come because you gave something. It doesn't come because you... You see, there are people who say, when I give to the church 10,000, God will bless me the 100,000. No, God does not do betting. He does not do uh, business. That is business. You, you, you think that you give and then he'll give you back. No, God does not transact his things away. He tells you, for you to be able to claim the, the, the promise of blessing, there's something that you need to, uh, there are some qualities you need to have met. These qualities are, are the only thing which is making you not receive this promise of blessing. So let's go to Psalms 1 1 and let's see exactly what is God promising us and how can we claim this promise of blessing. Okay. The book of Psalms 1 1 says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Now, that's the first thing. If you want to be blessed, don't walk in the counsel. Now, look at that word, walking in the counsel. It doesn't say don't walk with the ungodly because the Bible tells us we're in liberty. We can mix up with anyone. We can go, but then we should be a light shining unto them. But it tells us don't walk in the counsel because there's something. These people will want to counsel you and tell you, let's follow the wrong way. Don't walk in their wrong way. What they counsel you to do if you want to be blessed. Be there and let your light shine in darkness. Show a testimony. Show others that this is exactly what God wants to be done. So be a testimony. Be a light to the world. Be a salt to the world. Okay? So don't walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Nor stand in the way of sinners. Nor sit in the seat of the scornful. Now when you're sitting there. Okay. We want to scorn someone. Sit down here. And uh, uh, let's scorn him together. No. Don't do that. Don't scorn other people. Don't uh, walk in the, in the ways of the ungodly. Don't do things like they do. But be different. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind and know that you're a child of God. Even if you're sitting somewhere with sinners, don't do as they do. Okay? And God is going to bless you. All right? Let's continue there. Verse 2 says, But his delight is in the law of the Lord. Where is your delight? Do you, do you enjoy learning about the word of God? Do you enjoy doing things the way God has said them to be done. Do you enjoy the presence of God? Do you enjoy reading the Bible? Do you enjoy listening to sermons? Do you enjoy watching videos like this which are talking about the, uh, the Bible? Do you enjoy such kind of things? Now that's exactly what the Bible is saying. Uh, uh, please. He's saying, delight in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Meditate in the word of God every day. Meditate, see, what is God saying? Okay, what is God saying? Listen to him. Is he speaking to me in a certain way? Listen and say, okay, God, I thank you for what you've spoken to me. I thank you for what you're saying. I thank you for this and that. 
and God is going to bless you because you love his word. If you have a child and this child is always enjoying your presence, he's always enjoying be sitting with daddy, sleeping next to daddy and just being there, telling you good things, enjoying your presence, enjoying your time, enjoying your story, you'll always want to bless this child. If this child is always doing good things, he's always, I sent you to the shop, you don't complain, you just go straight and you go and bring whatever uh, you have to bring. You will be so much happy with this child. You will bless this child. Now, God is the same way. We are his children. You enjoy his presence. You enjoy talking to him. You enjoy telling him, God, this is what I'm thinking. Today, I want to go this and this, uh, this place. I want to go and uh, do this kind of business. Please show me the way. Show me the right people to work with. Show me the right things to do. Show me the ideas that I can put forth. God, give me ideas. He, he wants you to be his child. God does not want you to go and do your things in your own way. No, involve him in every your situation. The same way if you have a spouse, you always call them and tell them, hey, you see, today I'm going to meet this person and the, the interview just went this way. This one happened. You see, uh, be happy with me. This has happened. The way you call your spouse, the way you call your, your parents, the way you call someone close to you and tell them, this is my next move. This is how it's going to be. Involve God in your movements, involve God in your activities, and He's going to bless you. He wants to be involved in everything that you're doing, okay? Now, listen to this. Uh -huh. Verse 3 says, And He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters. Now, when you do, when you have fellowship with God, you shall be like a tree planted at the, at the, at the, uh, at the rivers of water. Now, how does a tree which is planted just next to a river uh, look like that bringeth forth his fruit in his season anytime you'll always be bringing out fruit every time you'll always be a fruitful person people will always be looking Keith these days you just everything you touch prospers everything you do prospers what's what's your secret because I delight in the presence of God I delight in uh, the blessings of God. I'm always doing his will. I'm always following him. I'm always a light shining in the world. I'm a good testimony to him. I, Wherever I stand, people can say, wow, that guy, that guy is a man of God. That lady, that lady is a woman of God. You see, that's how God is going to be proud of you and is going to bless you. Listen to something else here. His leaf, his leaf shall, shall uh, also shall not wither. There is no day that you will wither. There is no day that you will say, it's a bad day for me. It's a bad month for me. No, you will never wither. Why? Because he's given you his blessing. And let's see, continue here. It's saying, and whatsoever he doth, shall prosper. Do you want to prosper in everything you do? Do you want to prosper in everything that you touch? Do you want to prosper in every activity, every business, every deal, everything that you do, you want to prosper because you're in the presence of God, because you have, you're always uh, involving God in your ideas. There are some times that you want to go to, uh, to do some business and you just wake up in the morning and to tell God, God, please, I know I'm going to do this business. I know I want to achieve this and that. Please help me. Please help me so that I can be able to do it the right way. Give me favor before your eyes and before the eyes of men. This is one thing that I always say all the time. That God, please give me favor. Every person that I'm going to meet today, let, 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 let I be favored, oh God. Let, let the, the nature and man favor me in everything that I'm going to do because I love your presence. Because Lord, I delight in your word. I delight in your fellowship. I delight in doing things that your way. And God is going to give you favor. Every office that you enter, you're going to be favored. You're going to be favored because the Bible has promised us. The Bible has promised us. Jesus has promised us that, hey, I will never leave you. I'll never forsake you. But when you leave him, when you forsake God and when you say, oh, I don't want to do his things, then what is he going to do? God is a gentleman. He doesn't come rushing on you. No, he stays and he, he relaxes. And the ways for you to draw closer to him because he says, draw closer to me and I will draw closer to you. So if you don't draw closer to God, then what do you expect? You'd be pushing things and then you're wondering, why is my things not working? Why are some people don't do even doing much, but they are succeeding? Their things are working very well. What is really wrong? Because you don't delight in the law of God. You don't delight in doing what is right. You don't delight in putting Jesus in your plans, in your ideas. 
and verse 4 says, The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Okay? Now, the ungodly, the people who don't believe in God, they are not like that. They don't have this blessing, the promise of blessing. They don't have it. They are like chaff, which the wind driveth away. They touch this, it goes away. They, they, they do a very nice business. At the end of the day, it's, it ends in tears. When, when they do these things are not really working in their way, you, you wonder, have you ever seen a Christian who... He's, he's, he doesn't earn much, he doesn't have a lot of money, he doesn't have so much, but he's always comfortable, he's always rejoicing with his family, they are happy, they're doing their things well, but you have millions of money, you have a lot of money, you have a lot of things, it's like your pockets are, 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 have some holes, and you wonder, this money has never given me peace, these things have never given me peace, why? Because you're ungodly come closer to god come to him and tell him god you promised me something you promised that you'll be with me you'll never leave me and the only way you can come close to him is by doing his will do you do the will of god do you understand what the will of god is jesus says that uh he he told us that if you love me do my will Follow my commands. Now, what are the commands of God? He says that follow and believe the gospel. That is exactly what he has told you. Believe the gospel. Do you believe the gospel? Do you listen to the will of God? Do you do what exactly God has told you to do? Or are you there bargaining yourself and telling yourself, no, 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 I'm a good person. I can do this. I can do it my way. No. He says, if you love me, follow my commands. And I've commanded you one thing. I've commanded you to follow the gospel, to believe the gospel. Now, many people I know, they don't know where the gospel is. The gospel is not, is not Mark, Matthew, John, Luke, and John, and all that. It's not the four gospels. Those are gospels. That is the life of Jesus. Our gospel was revealed to the Apostle Paul. And the, the gospel of today, the gospel of our salvation today, is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. And it says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which you received, and wherein you stand, by which also you are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered uh, first unto you that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That's the gospel. That is exactly what Paul is explaining to us, how that Christ died. He died at the cross. He shed his blood. Without shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. The shedding of his blood gave us remission of our sins. And if you believe this, because Paul says, this gospel I'm giving you is not something that I came up with. It was revealed to me by God himself. You can see where, where, where he says uh, how Jesus revealed that uh, gospel to him. In Galatians uh, chapter 1, verse 11, 12, he says that... Uh, this gospel was revelation by Jesus Christ. He, he revealed the, the gospel to him. And he told him, if you want to be saved, if somebody wants to be saved right now in the church age, in this dispensation, please follow the gospel. Believe that Jesus died for your sins, was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. When you believe that, you're saved, my friends. You can confess it to the whole world. You can confess it to God and tell them, God, I believe that you died for me. I believe that you did this for me. And I receive that atonement. You can confess to your friends and tell them, Jesus saved me. And this is how you also need to be saved. Confession comes later. But believing comes first from the heart. I'm going to be continuing this series of the 10 promises that God wants us to claim. So the first promise is the promise of blessing. And the next time I'll be speaking about other promises, the promises of the promise of peace, the promise of forgiveness, the promise of reaping and so there are couple of promises that God has promised us and we have to claim these promises. So see you guys and look forward for the next nine promises and I'm sure they're going to be a blessing to you. God bless you.